This is the point in the programme that I introduce our guest analyst who will give us her personal take on the news and issues of the day. And tonight I'm joined in the studio by the journalist, political affairs commentator and Arise News analyst, Dr. Constance Ikoku. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. We've, we've had both sides of the political divide. Um, earlier we had the PDP on the back of that fiery speech given today by um, Atiku Abubakar, and then we had the APC. Well, what do you make, first of all, of uh, Mr. Abubakar's speech and the fact that he seemed resolute in fighting on? I mean, he pointed uh, out a lot of um, issues that need to be dealt with that mm. arose from uh, during the elections and after the elections. And I think the first thing to say is that it is rational to assert that it's time to get over the Supreme Court judgment and then to move on to something else. Mm. However, I will quickly also say that it is important to then look at Nigeria in the sense that it needs a reset. It's evident that we need a reset in the country and that's where his speech comes in because of the issues that he raised. Mm. A couple of them we've discussed already on the show, for instance, uh, gaining 50% of the vote, if not rerun, and then elec election litigation to be ended before um, swearing in, collision of results uh, to be electronic, that's very important. But I think the biggest one is the six year rotation of mm. presidency. That one has a bit of history. Um, the late Chief Alex Ekwame, was the progenitor originator of the, the sixth uh, uh, structure in Nigeria, the sixth geopolitical zone. He was vice president uh, to Al Haji Shagari, and when that presidency was overthrown by Al Haji Muhammad Buhari, no, General, General Muhammad, yeah. Muhammad Buhari, Ekuma was in prison and he was thinking about Nigeria and he came up with this. He muted the idea with his friend Bishon Nabanjo. And so when they came out of prison during the 2005 National Conference, he said, This is a solution to Nigeria's tension and problem, political problems. This will balance the country and reduce all the squabbles that comes with presidency, and it will be fair and equitable. It wasn't accepted, but later uh, General Sani Abacha did adopt it. It is not law by any means, although we talk about it, it is not law. So mm. it's good that Atiku Abubakar raised it now. Um, the term, whether it's six year, five year, President Jonathan, you know, muted five years, mm. whether it's seven years, whatever, it is something to be discussed. And I think the time has come. It, it, will, it will be part of the restructuring that the country needs, in yeah. addition to other things he talked about in electoral reforms. And obviously, the bottom line is pushing those ideas through the National Assembly. And the PDP has a considerable weight within that National Assembly. It is interesting that he says that Nigerians can lean on the PDP now, mm. that they will provide a viable opposition. That's music to the ears of many Nigerians because for the past how many years they haven't done that. Mm. Normally after the elections the parties that lose wither away. You don't see them again until the next election because I think they have problems with funding and everybody is looking to be hired whether through the front door or the back door by the party that is in power or the presidency. Mm. So people will be looking at them. Of course there is also labor the time is now. Yeah, and they you talked about working together. I mean, th th that's what um, Abdullahi, Ibrahim Abdullahi, who's the Deputy National Secretary, was talking about when he was here, that they think that it would, they would, as a collective force, working with the other opposition parties, they might be able to push through things that they want um, you know, at the National Assembly. It has a point because there are so many uh, parties in the National Assembly now. Mm. You, you might need a coalition you know, with the ones that have similar ideas and views with you and then you can work together to push the fundamental reforms that need uh, to mm. be taken in the country. So let's see how that goes, but you know, people will be expecting to see something happen. Right, and in the opposite end of the spectrum, I wouldn't say directly, I mean entirely opposite, but on the other side of the Mason-Dixon line, Dr. Taufik Raimi speaking on behalf of the APC 
Um, we were trying to get a sense of what President Tudubu's economic philosophy is. Did you get a sense of what it is? No, I was totally lost. I, I was waiting for him to land and he was all over the place. He kept talking about uh, President Tinubu's record mm. in Lagos State, which everybody knows. He's or he, uh, the, the main thing that he did was raising the internally generated revenue. Um, what, when which you, is commendable, let's yes, face it. Yes, it is. Yeah. It, it is, because then you have enough or more funds uh, to do the things that need to be done. But when you match it with the quality of life in Lagos, I don't know how that pans out, you know. And then it's also good that he talked about shared prosperity. Mm. Do you see that shared prosperity in Lagos and then in Nigeria in general? You don't, you don't get the sense that with all that money that is being generated in Lagos, the quality of lives have improved tremendously or dramatically. Yes, there are new, big, shiny buildings, uh, blocks of flats, you know. There are activities, of course, commercial. Uh, there are industries. Um, um, Lagos has always been the commercial capital. But one thing that I think is also necessary to, uh, to talk about is the economy has always had the same problems we know, whether it's infrastructure and the rest of them. So take, for instance, the ports. We have only one functional port in Nigeria, mainly in Lagos. And that is why the Lagos port is overstretched. We know it's not a deep sea port. They are planning a deep sea port in um, Lekki, yeah, Lekki, which will be good. But there are also other ports all over the country. You need to have an efficient you know, port system and you know, every other, because it affects a lot of things. So for instance, a 100 ton of cocoa being exported from Ghana abroad it's about, I think, uh, 2000 no, $7,000 in Nigeria. You haven't been exporting Nigeria. cocoa, have you? No, no, I haven't. Because <laughs> you seem to know quite a bit. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> but in Nigeria, it costs $40,000. Mm. Why? Inefficiency. You know, we're talking about the single window system that they need to put in place. I mean, there are things to be done. I mm. hope that within that economic philosophy he's talking about, that he really looks into all of these things decentralized economic system. That is why Lagos is overwhelmed. Everybody wants to go there because that's where everything um, is, mm. is, is situated. But when you open up other centers, it releases the stress of, you know, on Lagos and then people can live in other places. There will be jobs generated around you know, commercial activities and then you have a better quality of life in other places. So these are things that need to be looked into. Mm. The fact, of course, is that given the state that Nigeria is in, and you could certainly make the argument, which I tried to make with him, that the APC is, if not fully, certainly partly responsible for where Nigeria is today, um, that they're simply, it doesn't matter who the president is, whether it's Tinubu or someone else, um, that there won't be a shortcut to development in this country, given that those sort of economic conditions and that it'll be, there will be painful economic policies. That's right. So the point then is, are you ready to make the painful decisions hmm. or do you want to take the the, the route that is politically expedient. I mean, when you look at the last eight years and now, it's like everything is schizophrenic. Nothing makes sense. And then you ask yourself, if it doesn't make sense, why do you keep doing the same thing? You know, so you have the power, you always fight for power, you have been fighting for the power, you get the power, and it looks like you do not want to do something with it. So, yeah, so the APC, they still have the power now for the next four years, maybe after that they have another four years. The question then becomes, what do you do with the power? Look, I think it's time to also say to Nigerians, or Nigerians say to the government, governance is about people. If you are not working for people, then don't fund the government. Why are you funding people that are not working for people? They don't need to be there. Mm. That's so a these, good point. these are tough <clears throat> issues that need to be discussed, right. and then the government itself needs to take the decisions, no matter how difficult they are. Very wise words. On that note, Dr. Constance Ikoku, journalist, political affairs commentator, and Arise News Analyst, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye bye and thank you for watching.